And finally, the old man says, no, I really want to know what is it you're writing? So finally, Rumi says, you know, what is it? Let me see this. What are these marks you're putting on this piece of paper? So finally, Rumi's like, okay, I got to get rid of this guy. And he's very persistent. And he says, okay, I'm doing this, writing this. And, and the old man says, let me see, let me see. I need to see it. And uh, Rumi hands him the book. And the old man picks up the book. He goes through it, looks at it, and throws the book into the river. And the water of river was going really fast. And Rumi just goes crazy because after 10 years, he just finished writing this book. This was the last moment. He just finished after 10 years of writing this book about spirituality, God, Sufism. And he just finished the last sentence, the last word. And this guy picked up the book and threw it in the river. Rumi goes crazy. Rumi goes crazy and starts screaming and yelling at, at the old man, like, you idiot, you stupid, you illiterate. What the hell did you do? You destroyed 10 years of my work. I mean, Rumi literally wants to kill this guy. I mean, he's so angry. His face is red. He's just, his eyes are just bloodshot. He's ready to kill. And then the old man looks at me and he says, what is it, what is this thing that you are willing to kill somebody over it? What is it? What? You're so upset that you're, you are going to look at you. You look so elegant and you look like you are a spiritual teacher and all your awareness and everything is out the window over some piece of paper and you're willing to kill. And Rumi is like, of course. And he says, what, what do you want? You want your book back? Do you want it back? And Rumi says, of course you idiot, I want it back. How, how do I get my back? You such an idiot. And then the old man does his hand like this. He puts his hand towards the river and the book starts to fly back from the river, spins back, spins back, spins back, dries up. All the writings come back and comes to old man's hand and the old man gives the book back to Rumi and he says, here, take your book, have it back. And at this point, Rumi is completely shocked and his jaw dropped. He's like, what the hell just happened? He can't believe what happened. And Rumi says, how did you do that? And the old man says, you won't understand. This is beyond you. You don't, you won't understand. And the old man walks away. The old man walks away and Rumi is complete shock. And a minute goes by and all of a sudden Rumi realizes that he just met a Yanni. He just met a fully awakened master.
actually realizes he just met his sat guru. So then Rumi starts to chase him, trying to catch up. And his master's name, the old man's name is Shams, Shams Tabrizi. Shams, who's from Tabriz? Tabriz is a place in Iran. So for one year, Rumi is chasing him. And anytime Rumi arrives at any town, because he's asking people, have you seen Shams? Have you seen this guy with this looks? And every time he gets to any new town, people say, yeah, he was just here. He was here five minutes ago. He went in that direction. And if you hurry up, you're going to catch up with him. So this went on for one year. For one year, Rumi's going from one town to another town, to another village, to another city. And wherever he gets to, when he asks for Shams, people say he was just here and he just left. Hurry up, you're going to catch up with him. So after one year, Shams, his sad guru, reveals himself and allows Rumi to find him. And then after that, Rumi's true training begins with his sad guru. Because all these years, Rumi was writing all these books, reading all these books, going through all these things, teachings, but it wasn't coming from a direct experience. All this was like academics. It was like something he had read. And then a phenomena happens. That phenomena is a love affair. The love affair happens between the Satguru and the disciple. It's not just like the disciple falls in love with the Satguru. The Satguru falls in love with the disciple too. And the love affair starts in between the two. It's not, of course, romantic, but there's a lot of love with, between them. And since this love happens and the heart of the disciple opens up, then the sad guru is able to transmit wisdom to the disciple, to the follower. And in that transmission, the disciple starts to receive the wisdom and understanding. And of course, the disciple is saved because only through that love of guru, the power of the guru, an encounter with the yani, with the sad guru, we can be saved. Otherwise we're lost. We're completely lost in this ocean of Maya, in the world of thoughts. And we fall into deep abyss of fear, worry, anxiety. And we really start to believe the world that we are perceiving is real. So, Greed, anger, jealousy, fear of death, everything takes over and it sucks you in 